1994 Suzuki Vivio T-Town, or T-Top. Finally, the real K cars are reaching the United States, and they're slow and boring. What the hell is this? This isn't a fast turbo cappuccino, or a Honda Beat with individual throttle bodies, or a futuristic AutoZam. This is a Suzuki Vivio with a CVT and one throttle body. It has a 0 to 60 time of ask your mother and the throttle response of okay, the throttle response is good, but this is a continuously variable transmission from the 90s. This is an OG CVT. What it does is it lets the engine spin up to the power band before adjusting the ratios for higher speeds. This is how a CVT is supposed to behave for maximum efficiency. Now, I enjoy it in the same way I enjoy the raspy note of an MR2's 4AGE or the brumple sound of a Honda D-Series. Those are not auto-tuned engines like the insulting turbo Mustang. And this CVT doesn't fake shift. It goes straight to the power band and stays there. Now, what RPM is that? Well, it has no tack, so I have no idea. To the uninitiated, a true CVT sounds like the engine is just running away. Something's wrong with it. And when you're trying to maintain 100 kilometers an hour on a slight rise, well, just listen to it. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go and see if I can go. Wow. Yeah, that's what it <laughs> It's just, you're just pouring it. Well, <laughs> there's 50 miles an hour. Yep. There's, so that's 55. Yep. Can I get to 60? Can I get to 100 kilometers an hour? There it is. You have someone in this car who doesn't know what this is all about, and they're gonna be like, stop it, you're gonna break it. So CVT is in 2020, now have to make those fake shift points for all the Karens and Kens of the world. If you ever, if you ever had like a, a twist and go scooter, like a Honda Elite, You'll know how the Vivio delivers power. And like a scooter, this car doesn't creep. It doesn't creep forward. Like most automatic cars, when you put them into D with no throttle input and no brakes, just let it go. Even CVTs today, they'll cr start creeping forward. They'll go maybe five miles an hour. This does nothing. You put it into drive and the, and the car stays still. You're like, huh? So you got to spin up the engine a little and then the CVT catches, I don't know, some like spring lets loose or, or the variator does something. And then you, and then you, then you move forward. It makes stop and go traffic really jerky. What the Vivio is really good at is rolling through town nice and slowly with the roof off. The roof comes off in three pieces. Just like a cappuccino, first the T-top parts come off and then the center part lifts out so now you have a targa but here's the best part it's not just the rear glass that comes down it's the entire roof of the rear part folds down electrically and folds under the rear seats li like a turtle or something and for americans uh that makes uh entrance entrance and egress into the back seat of the car easy instead of trying to like force yourself you know put the seat forward and climb in through that like an eclipse, just bypass all of that. Climb over the trunk, that use the rear tire as a step, and climb in through the roof. Man, we rolled through town when school was letting out, and I became popular like I never was. The suspension of a Vivio is the softest of any K car I've felt. It has lo it's long travel too, making easy work of old Pennsylvania roads. But, and here's a little unnerving thing, with the roof off, the body flexes in three directions. I never felt this before on any type of car. Okay. I'm driving and I feel vibrations in the steering wheel. Steering wheel is kind of moving up and down a little bit. But my butt in my seat is gyrating. It's going in a circle. All right. And then with my eyes, I see the, the windshield sort of frame. A pillar, everything, that's vibrating left and right. 
So this entire car without the roof attached is liquid. It's not, it's not braced. It's going yee as it's going down. Now, it's more like a reed blowing in a wind because the car is like 1,600 pounds. So there's not a whole lot of torque in the body to break or bend anything. It's just light. It's the whole, a reed blowing in the wind will blow left and right, but it'll never break. Whereas a tree, you know, breaks. So after I, you know, learned that, I'm like, okay, this car, there's going to be a lot of body flex with the roof off. So just go with it. I like the idea of owning one of these. I like the idea of being seen and being liked. It's one of my things that I love about the Falcon for all its, you know, endless quirks of it being a heavily, heavily modified car in many different directions. But when I drive the Falcon, you know, old men who would probably not like me suddenly like me. And this is uh, the same thing, but from a different generation. I am seen and liked in this car. But I have to understand that this is coming from a kid who used to bring toys to school to be liked. So I understand that while it's an indulgence, maybe it's not the most healthy thing to do. Maybe I'm reading too much into this. Anyway, the Vivo. Without a turbo or high compression, because this is made for 87 octane, this Vivio doesn't have the grunt to deal with rural commuting. Highways are tough. Hills are tough. If your commute is on surface streets in suburbia, if, you nev- if the most you have to put up with is like, a, uh, like maybe a U.S. numbered highway, no interstates. Just that, you could make this work. But the more I drove the Vivio, the more I thought about how this is a modern take on their original one. You know, the one in, uh, what was it, Forza that couldn't make it around like one of the tracks, the Subaru 360. See, this is peak Subaru. And not peak modern Subaru, but the apex of what people used to think of when they thought Subaru. Tiny and weird like the Subaru 360 or the Brat. The 70s mentality of a small, compact car that was reliable and unique. A little bit cool and a little bit alien too. To domestic buyers, they were foreign cars with with a capital F. The name Vivio comes from the 660 engine displacement written in Roman numerals. The designation for the engine is EN07E MPI. It's the Subaru Clover 4 engine getting 52 horsepower and 41 pound-feet of torque and all the speed and grace of a toddler climbing into a bouncy house. There is a speed limiter, and here's how it works. Anything faster than 80 miles an hour will shut down the engine and transmission. It's like the engine goes into limp mode and the CVT goes, nope. And so you're, it, you will then be forced to coast back, back down below 80 miles an hour. It's the automotive equivalent of making a break for your next class in an empty hall, only to get told by the wandering gym teacher to pop the brakes there, Flo Joe. But the upside of all this smallness is fuel economy, which hovers around 44 to 45 miles per gallon highway and high 30s in the city. There's also the inherent weirdness of it all. On one hand, this comes with a mini disc player. Yes. Oh, and that rear window again, you can lower that at any speed you want. All it is is a switch. Now, there only existed 3000 examples of this car. So if you get one, you get to feel exclusive. Uh, And even fewer supercharged models were made. Yeah, you get a little blower on one of these things. They only made a thousand of those. This is technically a late model 93 badged as a 94, but well, who cares? You're still going to be the only one in person in the Tri-County area to have one. Renee bought this uh, down at Duncan Imports. I think as of this recording, they still have two green Vivios there. Who cares if your girl is getting dicked down in a Sam's Club break room as we speak? You have a Vivio. And your own unique things to recognize the value in unique things. People will appreciate you for having the ability to appreciate things. And because it'll keep working long after it's supposed to. Like a millennial post-retirement age. 
A Subaru K car offers the pillow smoothening reassurance of a hotel that passes the black light test. 1994 Subaru Vivio. An heirloom from a time when people had to look at perfume ads or go to their local community pool if they wanted to look at feet. Mods on this particular model include new hubcaps and mud flaps, a new dashboard tray, and a solar powered air freshener. What you do is you add fragrant oils to this thing. And it's not connected to any part of the car. It just right here in the in the in this little indentation in the dash. And that little fan there runs continuously. It's just run off of the solar panel. So you park the car if you're in the sun, away it goes. This is all nice if you want to be cool. But is the price of being cool or quirky or fun worth the price of a car that isn't fast or even all that safe? Sure, it's got good brakes. It has a trunk and I can drive this car with my shoes on. So that's a big plus. Normally my quadruple E feet, I can't drive K cars with my shoes on, but this I can. So good on that for that. And the power steering is way too boosted for a car this small. Honestly, it doesn't even need power steering. I took my shoe off and put it on the engine. Well, I put it on the intake runners, but you know, that's how big the engine is. The hell do I need power steering for? So you're on the highway. I am constantly you know, uh, overcorrecting for every little thing. If I had one of these cars, I'd just take the belt off the power steering and just leave it at that. But man, getting liked by what I felt were the class of people who didn't like me in high school, I felt so with it. This Vivio is perfect for arriving, arriving fashionably. Subaru Vivio, the automotive equivalent of an off-white pair of Jordan 1s. Does anybody actually play street ball in these things? I don't even know if that's what those shoes are for, any more than athleticism is what this car is for. Which is funny because Subaru offered a Reebok edition version of the Vivio. What did you get for your Reebok, Reebok branded Vivio? Oh, you got fog lights and the word Reebok. You'd be hard pressed to take this out in anything more challenging than a light rainfall. Because for all the talk of Subaru's reliability and performance, this is one of their offerings that doesn't seem like it aspires to long ownership, even if it could last for 26 years. The Subaru Vivio is a car for being witnessed driving. It's not a cruiser. It's not a crawler. It's great for the city and not much else. Downtown Reading and why I'm missing? Rock and roll. But if you're going to get on 422, you need something that isn't going to fight you every inch of the way. You want to merge onto 422 eastbound? You better bring your A game. It's like a little slice of LA and Pennsylvania between, between Reading and and like Birdsboro and King of Prussia. When you merge, you gotta commit, and that's what this can't do. Subaru Vivio. It's the equivalent of pretending to be into DC talks because your crush gets low and makes it clap for the Lord. Subaru, they made a car. V-I-V-I-O. Yeah, I broke a string on my guitar, so this is really all I got.